So today I'm going to answer the question, should you use an AIO or a high performance air cooler in the new PureBase 500 DX from BeQuiet? So I've been really enjoying this PureBase 500 DX from BeQuiet and I've put together a couple of videos already. There's been a Vill video and I've also done a full case review. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link to them in the description for you. So as you can see today, I'm going to be focusing on air cooling. And I'm also going to look at what is the best fan configuration for this case if you go down the air cold route. And then I'm going to be comparing the results of that testing with my original build, which had a 360mm AIO in push-pull configuration. And with that configuration, I got some of the best results thermally that I have with exactly the same components in this case compared to a number of other cases. Okay, so before I come on to look at the air cooling results, I want to recap on my build with the AIO because I'm going to be using this as a comparison for all the air cool builds. So I used exactly the same components that I've got in here. It was a 3900X 2080 Ti and I had a 360mm AIO on the front as an intake with six LL120 fans on it in push-pull configuration. So with that particular build, the cooling results were exceptional. The CPU idled at 35 and went up to 81 degrees C under load. And the load was a 30 minute IDA64 stability test. The GPU idled at 31 degrees C, going up to 68 under the same load. I got on to look at the acoustics. The noise levels recorded with the front panel closed were 33 decibels at idle and gone up to 46 decibels under load. So when I took three of the fans off the I.O., both the CPU and the GPU idled one degree hotter and were one decibel quieter. Um, under load, the CPU was three degrees hotter and the GPU, there was no difference. And that build was two decibels quieter. Okay, so those results serve as a really important benchmark on what you can actually do in this case. You can get some great cooling results, although at the expense of some noise. So it wasn't the quietest build. So what I have done is I have replaced the AIO with an Octa NHD 15 and I've removed all the LL120 fans and used the Pure Wings 2 fans back in the original configuration. So we've got one fan at the front as intake, one fan at the top of the case as an exhaust and a fan at the rear of the case also in exhaust. So the stock configuration at this case would come from BQAT and a configuration which they say will give you the best cooling in the case with these particular fans. Okay, so how did this build compare to my original build? So at idle, the CPU idled at 40, which was five degrees hotter than the original build, while the GPU idled at 32 degrees C, one degree hotter than in the original build. Although the noise levels were two decibels quieter at 31 decibels. During the IDA64 test, there was a massive increase in CPU temperatures all the way up to 95 degrees C from 81. So an increase of 14 degrees C on the CPU load temperatures. Looking at the GPU, there was also a big increase here all the way up to 75 from 68. So a seven degree increase in GPU temperatures. Although under load, the system was much quieter by six decibels, 40 decibels compared to 46 in my original build. Next thing I did was I wanted to test had BeQuiet got it right with their fan location in this case. So I changed the fan at the top from an exhaust to an intake and reran the tests again. So that made no difference to the CPU idle temperature but the GPU idled two degrees hotter. Under load both the CPU and the GPU ran hotter. So the CPU was two degrees hotter well, the GPU was three degrees hotter. And looking at the sound levels, there wasn't really any significant difference between them. So this would be a configuration that we wouldn't recommend. It runs hotter and there's no saving in sound levels. The next thing I did was I removed the fan at the top and added it to the front of the case. So we had two front intakes and one rear exhaust. And looking at some others' reviews, they actually found improved cooling in this case compared to the original fan configuration from BeQuiet. 
So when I ran the tests on this configuration, I didn't find any difference to the idle temperature. CPU stayed at 40, GPU at 32, although it was um, one decibel quieter at idle. Under load, the CPU temperature again was the same, 95, while the GPU this time ran one degree hotter at 76, and there was a one decibel increase in the noise level. So I think from this testing, we can conclude that Be Quiet got it right with their fan placement. So if you are going to use the original fans, the three Pure Wings 2 fans that come with this case, leave them in the orientation that Be Quiet have got them in. So it's one intake at the front, one exhaust at the top over the left hand side of the case, and also a rear exhaust because that is going to give you the best thermals using those three fans. Okay, so although we now had a quieter PC, both the CPU and GPU were running much hotter than I would be comfortable with. So I wanted to see what I could do to improve the air cooling. So the next thing I did was I moved all the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 fans into the rear of the case and I occupied the front of the case with some 120 millimeter fans from Noctia. They were the NFS12A fans and I mounted three of them at the front of the case as intake. And I tested the um, Pure Wings fans in three different orientations. So the first orientation that I did was I had the two fans at the top as exhaust and also the rear fan as an exhaust. So three intakes at the front, 120 millimeters, and three exhausts of 140 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fans. Okay, so going on to look at the results. So you can see from the results on the screen there, there was a significant reduction in CPU and GPU temperatures, both at idle and at load with only a very little increase in the noise levels. Okay, next thing I did was I turned the two fans at the top round to act as intake. So we had five intake fans, two at the top, three at the front, and one rear exhaust fan. So this time the CPU idled one degree cooler at 38 degrees C compared to 39 with the previous configuration, and the GPU was also one degree cooler at 29 compared to 30. No difference to the noise levels. Under load there was no difference to the CPU temperatures although the GPU ran one degree cooler at 69 degrees C and again no change to the noise levels. Okay one of the things I noticed when I had the two fans at the top set to exhaust and was running the IDA 64 stability test there was an awful lot of heat coming out the top rear of the case but almost no heat at all coming out the top front. So to me, the front fan set as an exhaust wasn't really doing anything. And given that we had already got better temperatures in the top as intake, I had wondered if I had the fan at the front as intake and the fan at the back as exhaust, would that improve temperatures? Because the fan at the front as intake would increase the air coming in in front of the CPU cooler and the fan at the rear as exhaust would then help take that heat away. So to me, this made sense that this was likely to be the best configuration. So let's see if it was right. Okay, so going on to look at the results and importantly comparing these against our best configuration so far, which was the two fans at the top as intake. So this time both the CPU and GPU idled one degree hotter, while at load the CPU temperature was one degree better at 91 and the GPU was one degree worse at 70. Um, no difference at all to the noise levels, no matter what way we turn the Pure Wings fans around at the rear of the case. So although this configuration gave us the best CPU temperatures under load, given that the GPU was slightly hotter under load and we got better idle temperatures with the two fans at the top as intake, I've awarded the best configuration in this category to the where you had the two fans at the top as intake, rear exhaust, and then three 120 millimeter fans at the front as intake. Okay, so I think looking at those results, I can strongly recommend adding the three 120 millimeter fans in at the front. Although they do increase the noise levels a little bit, they significantly reduce the GPU temperature, and there's also some modest savings on your CPU temperatures as well. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was test how good these fans are that come with the case, the Pure Wings 2 140mm fans. 
So to do this, I wanted to run the exactly the same three configurations that we've just run, but instead of using the Pure Wings two fans, I replaced them with the same Noxia fans that were in the front of the case, and again looked at the thermals and also the noise levels. So going back to the first configuration, which was the two fans at the top set as exhaust, and also the rear exhaust, but this time with six Noxia fans in the case. Okay, so replacing the Pure Wings two fans with Noctia fans in the rear of the case, so we've now got six Noctia fans in the case. The CPU idled at one degree cooler at 38 degrees C, while all the rest of the temperatures were unchanged and there was no difference in noise levels. Next thing, turning the two fans at the top round to intake and comparing the temperatures again. This time the CPU idled one degree hotter and also the GPU was one degree hotter as well at idle. However, the CPU temperatures under load were two degrees cooler, while the GPU temperatures under load were two degrees hotter with the Noctia fans. Again, the only difference in sound levels here were that the noise was one decibel louder with the Noctia fans at load. So then we went on to compare the last configuration and that was the fan at the top front of the case as intake and the fan at the top rear of the case as exhaust. So this time with the Noctia fans, the CPU and GPU both idled at one degree hotter, while the CPU was also one degree hotter under load. No difference in the GPU temperatures under load. Um, and again, noise levels, both at idle and load, were exactly the same. Okay, so from this I think we conclude that the Pure Wings 2 fans that ship with the case are excellent. They do a great job of cooling at low noise levels. And unless you wanted fans in your build that had RGB on them, you would be absolutely crazy to take these out of the case and replace them with something else. Okay, so the Corsair LL120 fans that I had in my original AIO build look great. So say you did want to add these into the case for an air cool build, how would that affect the thermals and the noise levels? Because they're not the quietest fans on the market. So what I did was I compared the, the build when I had all six Noxia fans to when I had six Corsair fans in the case and looked at the noise and the thermals. So the first one was when we had the two fans at the top set as exhaust, the rear exhaust and three fans at the front set to intake. Okay, so going on to look at the results, um, at idle there was no difference in the CPU or GPU temperatures. However, the Corsair fans idled at two decibels louder than the Noctia fans, which we know are equivalent to the Be Quiet fans when it comes to noise levels. Um, going on to look at the load temperatures, so the CPU with the Corsair fans was two degrees hotter and the GPU was one degree hotter in this particular configuration. And again, there was a two decibel increase in noise using the Corsair LL120 fans. Okay, so next thing comparing the build to where we had the two top fans set as intake. So in this configuration, again, no difference to the idle GPU or CPU temperatures, while there was an increase in four decibels with the Corsair LL120 fans compared to the Noctia fans. Got on to look at the temperatures during the Ida 64, and again, with the Corsair fans, the CPU was two degrees hotter, while the GPU was one degree hotter. And this time, only a one decibel increase in noise with the LL120 fans. Okay, so if you do want to use LL120 fans in an air cooled build, both your CPU and GPU temperatures are going to be a little bit hotter under load, and also your system is going to be significantly louder than either the Noctia fans or the Be Quiet fans, which seem to be equivalent in both cooling and noise levels. Okay, so the final question I wanted to answer when it comes to fan configuration for air cooling in this case is, are you better putting two 140 millimeter fans at the front of the case or three 120 millimeter fans? So to do this, I added two of the Be Quiet uh, Pure Wings fans to the front of the case and then use three Noctua 120 millimeter fans in the rear of the case. And compared this to when I had six Noctua fans in the case, three at the front and three in the back. 
and the configuration I compared was the best one um, whenever we had the two top fans set to intake. Okay, so going on to look, when we had the two 140mm fans at the front, there was no difference at all to the CPU or GPU temperatures at idle. And also there was no difference in the noise levels. It was a different story whenever the system was put under a bit of stress with the Ida 64 stability test. And with the two 140mm fans at the front, the CPU idled 3 degrees hotter, while the GPU idled 2 degrees hotter. And again, no difference in the noise levels. Okay, so the results in that are fairly clear. You are going to want to put three 120mm fans at the front of this case rather than two 140mm fans because you're going to get improved temperatures on your CPU and GPU under load for no additional noise. Okay, so although I've told you about the audio levels as we've gone along, I think it's helpful for you to actually hear what the PC sound like in each of the different configurations. So I've recorded some audio recorded with the front panel on the case and a microphone held just six inches from the front of the case. I haven't modified this audio in any way, so I'm gonna play four different clips in idle and four different clips under load. And the configurations that I'm gonna play for you, first of all, the quietest one, where we just have the Pure Wings fans, the three fans in the stock orientation with the air cooler. The next one is the one that I would recommend for air cooling with the three Pure Wings fans in the rear of the case and three 120 millimeter fans at the front with the air cooler. And then the next two are when we've got the AIO. So the first is with just three fans on the AIO and then the last one is with six fans in a push-pull configuration on the I.O. And I'm going to play each of these twice for you so you can hear the differences. Okay, so now the time has come to answer my original question, which was, should you put an AIO or a premium air cooler in the PureBase 500DX? And to answer that, I think it really depends on what is most important to you, whether that is thermals, noise, or aesthetics. If it's thermals, the answer is pretty clear. You should put a 360 millimeter AIO on the front of this case's intake, with push-pull configuration and that is going to get you some really exceptional temperatures when it comes to both CPU and GPU temperatures under load. If you use the LL120 fans it's going to be great from an aesthetic point of view because I think my original build looked great but it is going to be noisy and it's not going to offer the best cooling results as some of the testing today has shown. If you want to replace those fans on the front of the radiator with more efficient, quieter fans, you're actually going to have better cooling, but at lower noise levels. So that's one option. Okay, if noise is the most important thing to you, Be Quiet, as their name suggests, have done a great job with the supplied fans in this case, in the type of fan supplied and their position in the case. So all you need to do is add an air cooler to the middle and you're going to have a really quiet build, even under load. The only downside to this is if you push your computer, your CPU and GPU temperatures can run quite high. And they would run higher than I would be comfortable with. So as a balance, I would recommend three additional fans at the front as intake 
keeping all your pure wings fans at the rear of the case. And that is going to increase your noise levels a little bit, but it's going to significantly improve your cooling potential in the case. When it comes on to aesthetics, that's very much down to your own personal taste. I've always been a big fan of AIOs and I'm not a big fan of lots of RGB. I like the white light, which lights up all the components in the case. I've not been as big a fan of large CPU coolers because you can't really see the motherboard or the components underneath it. And the case itself can look quite dark. So while I think my original build looks great um, aesthetically, um, I actually think this build with the original Be Quiet fans looks quite good as well. And it was only when I removed the RGB fans from the case that I seen this case in a different light, if you excuse the pun. And part of that is because of this light strip along the front top of the case. It actually provides quite a bit of light over the components in the case. So at the moment, I don't have any RGB on the fans, on the graphics card. There's a little bit of RGB on the motherboard and the RAM. But actually, the case isn't dark. Everything is lit up and you can see your components quite well. The fans look good and there's a little bit of light coming off them. And when the glass panel's on, there's a lovely little white strip along the bottom of the case. So Be Quiet have done a great job with the aesthetics of this case both in when you go with an AO at the front or if you decide to go with an air cutter. So I think you can win either way in this case. Okay, so following all that testing result, would I do anything different with my original build, given now what I know about the noise, the thermals and the aesthetics? I think I would. I still would go with an AIO in this build but I would get uh, six 120 millimeter fans from Be Quiet and use these as push-pull on the radiator. Given that the front of the case has RGB, I don't think I need any extra RGB on the radiator. And that would probably be the only additional change I would make. Although in doing this, I would significantly improve the noise levels in the case and also improve my temperatures. Okay, so I hope you find this video useful and if you're thinking of getting this case, um, it will help you in your decision making. Not only one, should you get the case, but two, what components are you going to put in the case and how are you going to lay them out. If you find it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the description and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.